to another Ask Nera to Joy video. Today, I know you are familiar with my model, Azura. She has come back. It has been one month since I started working on Azura's skin. Uh, Azura is suffering with mostly melasma, a little bit of congestion on the cheeks, but mostly melasma. And I want to go over this again before we start on the actual treatments. I've done two facial treatments on her since my last video. And I wanted to just sort of go over melasma and just how challenging it is to treat. So when Azura came to me, um, and she's a co-worker, I work with her. She's a wonderful um, therapist as well. So. I um, I have seen her over the time we had discussed, she'd come to me a couple of times about her melasma, noticing that some days her melasma was a little bit worse than other days, and that's the thing about melasma is it's really tricky. It is uh, very sensitive to light, to heat, to a lot of different things, so it's really important um, to, to, to understand this. So with melasma, it is something that if you have been using hydroquinone, which we know is a bleaching agent that is handed out by a lot of people, uh, doctors mostly, because it, it has been banned actually in, uh, in certain countries. Uh, hydroquinone is a bleaching agent um, that is something that if you use it for a certain time, and it is supposed to be six to eight weeks, you are supposed to then stop using it. Because within a pigment cell, which is called a melanocyte, you have a cycle, the tyrosinase cycle. And that cycle, if you go beyond the cycle with using hydroquinone, you've now upset that pigment cell. And then it, it floats, then it's, it's like a foreign allergen basically in the body. The, the cell is upset and you can never get rid of the melasma. The best you can do is just keep it looking as good as possible. So what I normally recommend is if you have melasma and you've never done anything on your melasma to start with, then it's better that you start with using things like the alpha-arbutin, the kojic acid, the licorice extract, uh, whitening and lightening ingredients, vitamin C, lightening ingredients that are not going to upset your cycle, your tyrosinase cycle. So that's really important to start with. But if you have, like in Azura's case, who had already used hydroquinone, we are no longer dealing with a virgin melasma. So it's already been affected. And you can tell when you look at melasma when it's it's already been affected. It's, it's sometimes like the lighter the brown spot, the more difficult it is to go. Often a darker brown spot is easier to get rid of than a lighter brown spot. So um, in Azura's case, because her melasma was not what we call virgin melasma, it had been tampered with with hydroquinone before, and she had gone used it long enough for it to upset her cycle. The best you can kind of get really is only about a 20, maybe 30% improvement, but then just to maintain that. Um, in time, over the years, and just with constant use of certain ingredients, then you you can possibly it might go but um but you know i would say definitely we can expect maybe a 20 to 30 percent improvement now how i started with azura's treatments was just introducing um different products to her skin i did not have her on harsh stuff at first we are now going forward, it's been a month, I've introduced retinol to her skin, I've introduced her, um, certain ingredients to her skin, which has made her skin a lot healthier, which means I'm going to get better results. That's why often when you, you, know, you go to have a certain treatment done, they will maybe put you on retinol for six weeks um, prior to the procedure because you are going to get uh, better results. So what I did with Azura Skin, I I started her, just started introducing ingredients into her skin so that I could improve the quality of her skin because I know that way I'm going to get better results. Today I have given her two new products to take home to start working with. Um, both are Rejuvi items, the D-Clearing Gel and which has the alpha arbutin in it, a derivative of the hydroquinone, a safer one. 
and also a moisturiser that she's going to start working with, an AHA cream for sensitive skin that really is going to help um, help keep that melasma lighter, keep the pore size small and all the, the good stuff that we need. Uh, she, her regimen has been pretty simple for home care. I did not use the alpha hydroxy acids on her in the very beginning in her first treatment. Her second treatment, I did introduce the um, fruit complex number one, which is a an AHA complex, and a complex again meaning it has your glycolic, your lactic, your malic, tartaric, and citrus, all different molecular size and weight to work on different levels in the skin. I like working with complexes. It isn't anything, its delivery system, its carrier is really important when you're, you're looking at AHAs. The carrier is, it almost has like an oily film um, this prevents surface irritation when I'm doing treatments. So I really like, um, I like the Free Complex uh, number one very much. I've used these products for 25 years and uh, it's, it's a really good treatment. So I started, uh, I started her first facial without it. Her second one, I did introduce AHA treatments. Going forward, I'm going to be working a little bit more aggressive on her skin now because I've prepared her skin. I've prepared it to be able to get better results. And it is challenging with melasma because even a lot of sunscreens that have chemicals, if you get a chemical burn from a sunscreen, then it, it, it can cause melasma. So it can make the melasma worse if you have it already. And if you don't have it, it can, you, it can give you melasma. So it's really important that you wear uh, physical blocks, that you're using your titanium, your zinc, whether it be in a cream form or a powder form, it's you need that really good sunscreen that doesn't have the chemicals in it to react and cause more melasma. So I always say to people when you have melasma to put your sunscreen on those areas uh, to double up and then go ahead and put it all over your face and go back and put it on those areas where you have the melasma. So you're really coating that area very well. But it is a work in progress when you're dealing with melasma. So going forward, I'm going to be working um, more aggressive and we are going to see if we can get more out of um, lightening azure skin the melasma there and uh, um, and that's just moving forward what I have in mind for her. Um, in one month, we mm -hmm. will have her back again and you'll be able to see the results of what I've done, which will be a more aggressive in that I will be using AHAs. She is on a new um, serum that will be liquid, that will be lightening and brightening her more. Um, Rejuvi has an extraordinary whitening and brightening line to start with as they do acne they're really um, you know there's so many different formulas in there for all different types of um, melasma and acne and so we are introducing some different uh, products in uh, into her regimen now so um, so that's it I just wanted to have her come back to tell you her skin quality looks great I know that I'm going to get more out of her skin now because she's been working with her retinol at home at night time and you had how many products were you using for your home care? Four. Four. So four oh, no, items. No, no, wait, 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 wait. No, no. I was using you know, before or no? Just, just since we started a month ago. Of the Rejuvi? Yes. Two. Two. Okay. Two. And then you had a couple of your other things that you yeah. were doing that we we sorted through those products yes. and said which ones you could use. And yeah. So it has some. Um, it's you know I'm hoping the next time we have her back that you'll be able to see on camera because the camera. It, uh, it, isn't, uh, it doesn't give us exactly what I see under the Maggie lamp, of course, but, um, but I'm looking forward with working, uh, working with her for the next month so that you can see the results that we can achieve. And, um, and I think that was it. Was there any questions or anything that you had for me? No. today no, no I, think that's I always <laughs> ask you questions when I have them so that's all <laughs> because I've had so many questions and people asking me please 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 give more product information I you know understand I'm really just trying to educate you on how to take care of your skin what ingredients are important for your skin and just and what works and what doesn't work and this has all been from my experience of working with the skin for 40 years so I will say that I am I am telling people now that you know this is what I use and I this is the product line that I've used because I've got really good results there are a lot of great products out there 
but I've chosen in this practice to work with Rejuvi. It's what I've used for probably 25 years. It, uh, I use it because it works. It's, um, you know, it just works. And, but I will say that if you are interested in the products that I've been using in treatment on Azura and also her home care and going forward, it is something that if you email the educate, if you email educate your skin at gmail.com, that will give you a list of what I've used, products for home care that you can use, and um, and just the steps of it will help explain things more for you and rather than have me do that here on video. So educate your skin at gmail.com if you are interested in knowing more about the products that I've used. So again, thank you for joining us. And we will see you in a month. One month. Bye. It just started showing up magically in matching spots right underneath my eyes. I had had a spot uh, here on the side of my face and right under my eye that had been there for several years before, but nothing really noticeable. I thought it was an average spot that you would get as you get older. And then I moved to LA from Phoenix, Arizona, and within a pretty short period of time, I noticed uh, these matching darkened spots show up, uh, sort of quarter or dime, you know, maybe nickel shaped here, and uh, and then slowly, sort of more spots uh, on the tops of my cheek and on my forehead, all at the same time, and I freaked out. So, I work in the beauty industry. I work in a spa and I work with uh, Nerda and she I would ask her sort of regularly about what she suggested and the things that could be done uh, she strongly advised against laser I guess because of my heritage even though I am light-skinned I have more of a propensity for uh, worsening uh, darkening in my skin so I started using another product line uh, for lightening of skin through a friend and it worked actually very well and the dark spots completely went away and then I found out that it had an ingredient in it that I wasn't supposed to use for a long period of time that could make the uh, dark spots worse over time which was hydroquinone and so I stopped using it and within less than a month the spots started coming back very strongly. Uh, still more lightened but uh, they came back and talking to Nerida Moore uh, we decided to do this together. So because she and I already had a rapport I think I probably I came to her and told her about something that I was noticing on my face and she kind of said yes you know I know what that is and it's really hard to work on it's really hard for it to you know get to it to go away and so she would give me little tips more of what not to do I think the if I remember correctly the advice first started with putting uh, a physical uh, SPF on my face uh, not a chemical one so I started putting a physical SPF on my face and then she recommended me to kind of double layering it in areas where the dark spots were coming up and that's where I started before the facials. Now when you're using a skincare line especially if it's uh, an MLM skincare line, uh, multi-level marketing skincare line or some other skincare line and they have really strong ingredients in it and the person selling it to you doesn't tell you, uh, you know, doesn't check to see if you're using other products or uh, that maybe don't go with it or the length of the time that you're supposed to use the products. They don't really tell you if they're not a skincare specialist. And so that's what happened to me. I started using a skincare line that uh, I should have been under the care of um, an aesthetics person who told me how long to use it, and I didn't have that at the time. The first time I met uh, Nerida for my first facial was during filming, and my skin felt really, really good afterwards. Uh, the experience was um, very different 
from most facials that I had had because even though it felt good, it was extremely educational and uh, the smell of the products were really great. It was just a completely different environment even though it was bright and not uh, you know more relaxing I really and I could feel the difference in the type of facial and the massage I learned a lot of things I didn't know I thought that I was oily I thought I had problematic skin and I found out that I'm you know I have this dryness in my skin which is probably the reason why I've had you know blackhead problems and congestion problems is because I'm not letting the oil sort of out I was I was trying to dry out my skin for so long, so it, my skin felt really, really good for um, you know days after I had the facial. And then I came in again uh, to get another facial, and it was much longer. We did a lot more extractions, and she did. I think that's when she did the AHA um, and a mask. And paraffin she did a, a long process I think I was here for an hour and a half or maybe a little bit more uh, and then I had another facial after that and she did a little bit m more of an aggressive treatment but then again still my, my skin felt really good very hydrated uh, all the products that I've used uh, my skin has felt really hydrated I haven't felt like it's been too much uh, she's been really good at introducing new products, you know, to the new products to my skin. I did bring in to her uh, all the other products that I was using as well to make sure that the ingredients matched up so that there was no nothing harmful or um, nothing would uh, damage my skin or I'd have any issues. And she looked at all of the products I was already using and told me what to stop using, what to continue using. And instead of trying to sell me or you know, trying to get me to use all these other products, I was using kind of a blend of my products and uh, the very targeted products that she has uh, to help my skin. The, the main difference that I'm seeing with my skin is kind of an overall normalness that's there. I tend to see fluctuations in my skin based off of the time of month or the weather, or I tend to was I would break out during certain times and I'm not really having that issue at all um, I'm noticing that I feel more hydrated but not like greasy uh, and the, the spots on my face are lightening um, it has been a little bit more of a struggle I think but it's weird because I notice I notice during certain times my the spots are a lot lighter and sometimes they're darker which is I didn't really have before so I notice that they're it's light for days and maybe I have more heat or more sun on my face and then um, and then they appear lighter uh, a little darker to me I don't know if it's just me but I think it's it's just the fluctuations from temperature but overall my they are lightening slowly they're they're getting there. I think the general thought of melasma is that you have a burn and when you're young and then you know 20 years down the road you have a spot that comes up in relation to that burn that you had when you were a kid. And I grew up in the sun. I grew up in Arizona and Hawaii my whole life until I moved to California. So it's I've been in the sun in some capacity most of my life. I've never had any problems with my skin, any darkening or anything like that. But I also never put like any SPF on unless I was outside at an event or on the beach for long periods of time. Uh, and then I moved to LA and I don't know if it was the combination of the stress of the move and uh, the, the pollution, <laughs> which I've also heard is another thing. I think that that could have, or, and a hormonal change that could have really um, quickened the process of that, or if it just happened to be at that time that uh, the melasma came out. But it was so sudden, it showed up in a matter of like a month or two. All of a sudden, I had what we call my pandas on my face and, uh, you know, two big dark circles. So.